every person has a story good, some are bad, and some nothing much to write about. Family, the most basic unit in the structure of a society. Family comes in different forms and with different meaning to different people. In ideal situations, family offers some of the most important things in life. Love, support, and a sense of belonging. And when someone who attaches this kind of value to family comes to lose it, well, that becomes a story of loss and devastation. I am walking into such a territory, a territory of loss, a story of devastation, a scenario less pondered. What happens when men are deliberately cut out of their children's lives? When these men want to care for their offspring, but their love unwanted. In recent times, there has been a trend where many people pour out their frustrations on social media. This is where I meet Dennis. Personally, I've attempted suicide twice. I failed, of course, I'm still here, thank God. Yeah. But I attempted, and it's true. The pain is so much. Because, because of education? Yes. Yeah. I will sleep, I remember one day, um, in my small house, I rented a room somewhere. And then on the, on, on the wall I had a, a small picture of my son when he was still small. And I would look at it and cry and cry and talk to him. And I would talk to him and tell him stuff. Take us to that point where you have said you tried suicide twice. Didn't you think that by that time you were trying suicide, you were actually risking the life of your own son, the one you wanted to be, uh, who's the one whose life you wanted to be actively involved in? Yeah, I think at that particular time, nothing really mattered. Nothing really mattered. Actually, um, the pain was so bad. The pain was so bad. I, could, I can literally tell you, I could count the number of days that I actually got sleep. There was a time when I woke up in the middle of the night, I took my phone, I was still in Nakuru, I called my mother, and I told her that, uh, don't know how I got here. I don't know how I got here. At one time, my family was full, and now I have nothing literally to live for. So my mother was trying to call me, uh, trying to convince me. I just put, I didn't cut, didn't connect, disconnect the phone. I just put it down, I took a rope, and jumped. God is merciful. Uh, the ceiling apparently wasn't uh, that strong because I, I just, I think the, the, the ceiling board just caved in and I fell down and that time I remember I cried, I cried the whole day, I slept there with, my, with that rope on my neck. The main goal is to be domineering or, or controlling over the other partner because this partner who wants to gain control will use the child as a decoy or as a bait to get the child to feel that they are more important, they are more loving as a parent, they are more secure as a parent, as opposed to the other parent who is often blamed. In Thika town, I meet businessman John Mwangi. Mwangi is a father of two boys. Although he pays for his son's school fees and upkeep, he is a father in pain. I'm going through a lot. People stay there, may see me smiling, but what is deep in my heart are very painful memories. What I was left with, the memories of my kids who are still alive. I just their toys and their clothes. They're still around, but I can't be allowed to see them. I mean, even if I was a bad dad and I was locked up in prison, they'll still be allowed to come and see me. But I'm a free man out here. My kids are free, but I can't be allowed to see them. You see, whatever she's feeding them, whether I'm bad, whether I'm good, I don't know. but. Just allow them to see me. 
I just want my kids to be allowed to see me. I just want to be allowed to see my kids. That's all I want. All right, guys, if you're just joining us, this is Relationship Wednesdays right here on KTN Laugh and Style. Right about now, I've been joined by our panelists. It's big, it's huge, it's better. You've just watched a story that's from the Father's Right Movement. And uh, we have, we have a specialist to tell us what it's all about in case you miss out on that. But I'd like to introduce our panelists. We have Paul Wafula. He is a pastor and also a member, or rather one of the main people under Father's Right Movement. We also have Tatiana. She is, uh, she is a lady of many hats, <laughs> as you'll find out, okay? <laughs> but you trend a lot on social media as Mama Oli. Yes. Yeah, I yes. love that. Thank I love you. your page. Thank you so much. I love that you love food, because I love food too. <laughs> I feel like we can have a relationship. <laughs> yeah. If yeah. it's over food, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Dennis Mwangi. He is a banker and also a member of the Father's Right Movement. That video that you just watched is uh, courtesy of KTN News by our reporter, Ibrahim. Yeah, Ibrahim Karanjo, thank you so much for that. So um, I'd like to start with you, Dennis. Would you kindly just tell us what the Father's Right Movement is and maybe just uh, spearhead okay. what the video was all about? Okay, yeah, thank you. Father's Rights Movement is a, uh, a movement of, uh, initially what was for fathers who uh, felt that they were being alienated from their children. Mostly in society, we hear about this tag called deadbeats. But the truth of the matter is that most fathers, and I'm sure most will agree, that most fathers out there are not deadbeat fathers. They are actually alienated dads. Someone, after a breakup, um, after a breakup, men usually get the short end of the stick. That uh, in Kenya, the children are usually considered to be more favorable when they are living with their Mom. mother. Mm -hmm. So after a breakup, it's by default. The mother takes the children. Kids. But what uh, goes on after that is what defines whether a deadbeat, a man will be termed as a deadbeat or the woman will be termed as a mm. deadbeat. Ever since when we started the Father's Rights Movement, we were very few. But now we have grown to a community of over 10,000 and growing every day. And we've been joined by women who say, yeah, wait, I've also been uh, separated from my husband or I've been separated from my wife but I have never after the separation it's been like enough days or months or years mm -hmm. without me seeing my children but I do support but what uh, society does they come up with a shaming um, name a deadbeat so that uh, they can manipulate you into um, uh, if, if for you to be ta to be seen as a responsible father you have to be parting with money. Mm -hmm. But you see, child support has nothing to do with money. Money is just a small aspect. Child support is uh, so wide. Mm -hmm. You need to be there, be involved, be with your child. Uh, you don't have to be a weekend dad who dishes like 60% uh, of that child's expenses. No, no. That is not child support. Mm -hmm. The real deadbeat, according to us, is that person, the woman or the man, keeping the child from a loving and caring partner. Mm -hmm. You see? So we need to separate uh, um, these this terms. A single person, a single parent, mm -hmm. or a single mother, or a single father, and a, a, a single, if I, if I may put it again, we need to separate between a single mother and a single lady, or a single father and a single man. Mm -hmm. You cannot say that I am a single mother, yet there is someone out there trying to fight to be in the life <coughs> of these children, of mm -hmm. his children, yet you are putting up uh, barricades and barricades and barricades. You're not a single, you're not a single mother. You are a single woman, yeah? Because you are the true deadbeat. If you are keeping that loving father away from his child for your own malicious reason, mm -hmm. whether to gain a um, monetary or a public pity, then you are actually a child abuser. Because uh, if um, child uh, parental alienation is actually a severe form of child abuse. And it's actually the only child abuse, mm -hmm. um, the only child abuse scenario that is accepted in this society. And it has to end. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about it as child abuse, but Me neither. Child abuse. Yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, it's mm -hmm. actually yeah, a very coin has just flipped. Yeah, I'm sort of way of looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, <coughs> last year uh, the uh, UN 
recognized the parental alienation as one of the most severe par uh, child abuse cases. Mm -hmm. we actually, in Kenya, we are only catching up. The um, government has not yet uh, gazetted it into our laws. That, uh, you see, according to the Children's Act, if you read uh, the first chapter, it says that every child has a right mm -hmm. to be taken care of or to have access That's to true. both parents. <coughs> yes. So if you take, up, take away that right of him or her having uh, access to one parent, then what are you doing? You're actually abusing his rights. Mm. And it is uh, those things cause a lot of um, psychological uh, damage over time. Yeah? Mm. Yeah. So even if we break up, it doesn't mean I've broken up with my child. Mm -hmm. yeah? You should let me be that father. Yeah. You should let me be that parent. Yeah? So we need to, to actually stop seeing, uh, um, looking at the issue of deadbeats as a purely financial. Yeah. We, we need to look at it uh, in a whole different way. Mm? That fathers, children need their fathers. Children need their mothers. Yeah? They need both of you. Because they don't understand uh, your battles. Mm? All, all that child knows is I love my father and my father. I am half of him, half of her. Yeah. yeah. And both of them play a role <coughs> in their yeah, life. Yeah, definitely. Oh, wow, mm? guys. Um, yeah. So we are going to take a short break. I know we've just introduced you to our guests and then we're leaving after <laughs> Dennis has talked. But we're going to take a short commercial break and we will be back with Dennis, Tatiana and Paul. And we are asking the question of, our question today is rather, are women responsible or partially responsible in situations where we have deadbeat dads? Answer our question using the hashtag KTLife and style. See you after the break. <laughs>